First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have activated pioneer land in which I produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was... No doubt. Peace. Back once again with the First World Order Radio. Dr. Aline Bay is your host. As well as we have co-hosts coming on tonight, we have Brother Grand Sheik L. Are you with me? Peace, God. Peace, God. How you doing tonight? Very well, very well. How you doing tonight? Excellent, excellent, excellent. All we got right, a good all show. right. We got a good show tonight in which we're going to be dealing with the mysteries of life, death, and reincarnation. Oh, wow. All right. You got any thoughts on the topic for tonight? On the mystery of life, death, and reincarnation, what your perspective is on it, and of course, what does the more toward the Quran Circle 7 got to say about that? Well, actually, uh, it, it, it gives credence to, it gives credence to uh, that nobody really never dies, you know? Right. Uh, that what we, are, what we are in is in the vessels. This is our vessels that we are uh, in, in inside of temporarily, and it's our you know our, our responsibility to take care of our vessels and our temples until transition, whenever when transition comes upon us. You know, right. So, yeah. So that that's that's uh yeah that you know uh, that, that, and again also gives uh more uh, well I know myself uh more uh a better understanding. Of uh, what real life and what real death is, you know there is no death, you know, but only uh, transition into another uh, right. uh, 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 to another uh, what, what did you say another plane. Right. Mhm. Yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Well, let's go into these various planes that you're talking about, because from okay. uh, my research perspective, there's about seven of them, you know, at least the major seven planes are conscious levels. Of course, you have the physical plane, which is the material plane. Mm-hmm. Then you have the plane of force, which is the ethereal plane. You have the emotional plane, which is the astral plane. Mm-hmm. Then you have the mental plane. You have the causal plane. You have the spiritual plane. And you have the soul plane. All right? So these are the seven 
heaven. But these seven heavens correlate to the seven Elohims or the seven chakra points or systems, which is your points of light or vectors of light, your portals, uh, your wormholes, whatever you want to refer to them as. These are your seats of light. These are your endocrine glands. All right? Mm-hmm. It produces chemicals uh, from these ductless glands. These chemicals right. produced is what creates harmonial balance. So um, this is how you stay in tune with the laws of my yacht, mm-hmm. all right, in that aspect of being in balance. Um, so when you're looking at these particular, we know that we have a physical body, you have an ethereal body, which is about two inches above, which normally the colors look like, you know, a bluish color. Then you have the expansive um, body, which is called the astral body, which is about three feet outside of you. That is also known as the emotional body. Then you have your mental body, all right? Then you also have your causal body, your spiritual body, and your soul body. So you Mm -hmm. have seven conscious levels, internal and as well as external. And those external seven heavens correlate to the seven atmospheres. We talk about from the lowest atmosphere to the stratosphere, the magnetosphere, um, the mesosphere, the ionosphere, and et cetera. So those seven correlate to those seven. It's a known fact that if you get the Ark book written by Nur Ark Amin, he states that heaven, the heaven in which that the Muslims, Jews, and Christians speak about within their monotheistic belief system, as they claim it that it is, um, that the heaven that they actually are speaking about is actually in the ionic sphere. Right? That's what they're saying, yeah. It actually, right, it actually is in the ionic sphere. Now, um, I'm going to get the book, and I'm going to read um, a portion of it, you know, because um, it's very important, you know. But before I get to it, let me go back and we'll tie all this information in. Because we just finished listening to Carrier Swan, 1995. I said 94, but it's 95 hit um, of that metaphysical classic, A uh, Year, in which that, you know, gives you those two particular verses that this is not the first time I came to this planet. But every time I come, only a few can understand it. I came in ISIS, my words, they tried to band it. I came in Moses, they couldn't follow my commandments. I came in Solomon to a people that was lost. I came as Jesus, but they nailed me to the cross. I came as Harriet Tubman, I put the truth in Sojourner. Other times, I had to come back in that Turner. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> I mean, that right there is profound, you know, um, that's one of the most profound lyrics in hip hop, you know, that's ever been spoken, you know, and we're not even done with it. I mean, shoot, I mean, he went so far and said, um, at other times I had to come back in that Turner. They tried to burn me, lynch me, and starve me. So I had mm-hmm. to come back to Marcus Marley, Bob Marley. They tried to harm me. I used to be Malcolm X. Now I'm on the planet as the one called KRS, kicking them at the physical, spiritual, trying to get. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get with you, showing you that you are invincible. The Black Mm -hmm. Panthers is Black Answer for real. In my spiritual form, I turned into Bobby Seals on the wheel of steel. My spirit flies away and enters into Kwame Ture. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, that, like I said, that's the most powerful lyrics that you can ever do right there. You know, and so, you know, um, when you do your research, mm-hmm. you know, when you're talking about reincarnation, that is something of which that is profound within itself. And, um, of course, the scripture speaks about reincarnation. Uh, matter of fact, uh, for those who are, you know, into Christianity, Jesus specifically stated um, or told his disciples, um, well, whom do they say that I am? And the disciples were saying, well, some say that you are Jem- Jeremiah. Some say that you are Elijah or one of the prophets of old, you know. And then he asked Peter, well, Peter, whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, oh, you're the living Christ, the son of God, basically. So 
you know, if Jesus disagreed with the reincarnation, he should have stopped his, he shouldn't even have asked the question about who do the Pharisees or Sadducees or who do the people say that he is. In other words, how do they know that he meant spiritually? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or soul for, how, how do they know that? You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. and then we see another lesson within um, another portion um, of the Bible in the New Testament where it speaks about the um, disciples saying that, well, we heard that surely that Elijah will come um, in the last day um, of the Lord or the dreadful, um, dreadful days of the last days of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, Jesus, and well, surely he did. That was John the Baptist. You know, so here it is. Elijah supposed to have existed a thousand or more years before um, John the Baptist, you know, and here it is. He's being said to be, um, excuse me, Elijah was supposed to have existed a thousand years before John the Baptist, but here it is that um, John the Baptist is supposed to be Elijah, and Jesus is verifying it. So also showing the signs of reincarnation, even within Christianity, even though they try to state that um, they don't believe in it, but these are two prime examples within the New Testament in which that proves that it is. You know, mm-hmm. so um, go ahead, brother. Yes, uh, they they they're trying to put that trying to put that message through the Bible. Uh, although it's a bastardized, it's been bastardized so much, but they had put it through the Bible so many times that a lot of, of the Christians don't really understand it. You know the way the way, well, the way by the way it's put in the Bible, but if they really understand it in right. an esoteric sense, like we do, uh, they can really mm-hmm. see it. You know, uh, like Jesus uh, when he uh, 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 when he said he had died <coughs> and ascended to the heavens, actually he was talking about. Actually, when I'm talking about the physical death, it was talking about the spiritual, uh, the, the 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 material death of the self ascending to the spiritual uh, uh, life. Right. Yes. Uh, 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 but uh, you try to tell most of these uh, your Christian uh, church members that. Uh, even I mean, you try to really, really try to really get them to understand, and you uh, uh, explain it to them in the way you think they might get it. They still don't get it, right? <laughs> because they're so steep until their exoteric way of thinking, or how life and death, of their understanding how life and death is really taught to them, right, through generations right. through generations through generations through generations through generations. They say, as they say, right. the beat goes on. Right, no doubt. So let, let me let me break this down because um, Dr. Um, Masato Emoto, who's the Japanese scientist who did the um, discovery that there's spirit and water, which is an old discovery. Africans and, indig- and other indigenous people on the planet Earth been saying that for millions and, and probably billions of years. That there's life in water, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a recent discover, discovery that when you say something beautiful to a glass of water and you freeze it and look at it on a microscope, you see a six-point star configuration. Snowflakes, beautiful. Uh-huh. Uh, when you say something negative to a glass of water and freeze it and then look at it under, um, glass of water, um, under a microscope, it looks discombobulated. Uh-huh. So Dr. Masato Emoto said that he came to the realization that these crystals are spirits. Okay, mm. these crystals of spirits, these snowflakes, in which that exists, in which that they were seen under the microscopes, those are actually spirits because they are able to construct or conform into a six-point star configuration with positive affirmations or words as compared to something negative. And think about the fact that your body is seventy-five percent water, your brain is ninety percent water, your liver is eighty-five percent water, your spine is eighty-two percent water, your um. Your bones are twenty five percent water and et cetera, et cetera. So you are mm-hmm. an aquatic being. So, you know, if you were saying positive things then, you know, then what could happen? So let's go into that science because Dr. Emoto said that he came to the realization that these crystals are spirits. Um mm-hmm. there are many parallels 
He said, when ice melts, the crystalline structure becomes an illusion. It's there, yet it is not there because you cannot longer see it. Similarly, when a person dies, the body loses several grams of weight. When some people think of this weight is of the soul. Basically, the soul is the breath of life, which is the electronic vapor molecule. The whole life is written upon your breath of life, the insulation and exhalation. You don't believe me? Stop breathing and see what happens. <laughs> exactly. All right? Now, what is that? That is a form of melanin, dark matter, because that's the glue in which that holds the universe together. Is the glue in which that holds centrifugal and centrifugal force together, which is the push and pull factor. Yes. Which holds could... your, your, your molecular structure together. So this action and reaction force pair associated with a circular motion, which is that elliptical pattern, which is the same as the DNA, which is the same as the Kundalini, ascending or ascending. So the centripetal force can be um, supplied as a push force or the magnetic force, while um, the centrifugal force can be supplied as the pull force or the um, elect- um, the electrical force. In other words, you have what's called electromagnetism. Now, the thing about the interaction of the force is that it causes your emotion. This is what causes your emotional body to exist, which is your auric field. But when we um, which basically, you know, for those who have an open eye can actually see visually. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you have yeah. to think that the soul has mass. And if it returns to water molecules, because it has mass, it's affected by the gravitational pull of the planet Earth. And so every time the soul cannot transition over to the other side, we travel here to Earth on the water crystals of spheres of ice. So Earth is not our native home. However, most people on the planet are not able to obtain enlightenment. Mm-hmm. So to reach enlightenment means that you are able to completely let go of the ego and otherworldly attachments. All right? yeah. Now, you know, this is taught with Buddhism. This is taught within yogi traditions and et cetera. All right? Even the um, Christians say, um, you know, let, um, let this um, yoke pass from me. You know what I'm saying? Or do not let it be more than I can bear. You know what I'm saying? So all that is talking about the same thing. So in the past 100 years or so, the population has um, increased from 1 billion to 6 billion people. Now, during these 100 years, war, capitalism has dominated the planet. So rather than being mm-hmm. able to detach from our desires, the opposite has become true. And our desires have grown and grown. And very few people have been able to obtain enlightenment in this environment. In other words, they reincarnate. But I'll get to that in a second. It says, so Few mm-hmm. souls have been able to go home, and I believe they have remained on earth in the form of water. This concept or this connection in the concept of reincarnation, where these souls keep falling back to earth and need to redo their lives here. So the question is asked, so when a person dies, if they are unable to obtain enlightenment at that time, their souls remain on this planet as water. Now check this out. Hmm. Dr. Emoto broke it down, and he goes further. He said, this is why I believe yes. The Japanese character for spirit, which is, um, which is Shin uh, within Chinese, and actually within the Egyptian is Shin also, is a combination of the word rain and soul. People who have seen ghosts report seeing them in wet or in places where there is a lot of humidity. If as if the imprint of the soul which is in the form of water, certainly takes form when surrounded by water or moisture, much like a mirage. So by receiving beautiful thoughts and feelings and words and music, our ancestral spirits get lighter and are now able to make the transition home. When we consider this, we can see the importance of transition like Oben, which is during the summertime in Japan when they um, acknowledge their ancestral um, spirits, um, when we are alive, the, body, the human body is at approximately 36 degrees Celsius, which is 98.6 degrees. This is the temperature of the fluids in the body. When we die, this goes to zero degrees Celsius. When we die and go to the other side, cross the, crossing the water, water, we are not longer, we're no longer able to move our bodies, but the crystalline structure of our soul emerges, it's like water. When the water turns to ice, the 
crystalline structure becomes visible, but it is also immobile. So crystal equals spirit. All right? So mm-hmm. crystal All right. equals spirit. Now, for y'all to get more information, you have to check out Messages from Water, by 1, 2, and 3 by Masato Emoto. Also, the Hidden Messages in Water, and also Water Crystal Healing, Music and Images to Restore Your Whole Being, and also The Shape of Love. All right, so you have to get those particular books by Dr. Emoto, and um, he breaks it down as far as that is concerned. Now, I had to say that to say this, that that's very important to understand, all right, because we all say, dealing with this metaphysical information or esoteric information, that God resides within the human body, but also along with the entire cosmos. Mm-hmm. All right, so everything of value is within a home, the human body, nothing without. The esoteric quest without is but an illusion. You understand that? For a person who always examining everything outside of themselves, that is merely an illusion. All right? Now, when you come and do your research on life, death, Reincarnation principle. There's certain things in which that you're going to have to be, um, in which that will have to be verified. Get the book called The Perfection of Yoga by Swami um, um, Prabhu Panda. Hmm. This is what he says now. There are many planets in the universe, and on the highest planets, there are greater comforts. Durations of life is longer, and the inhabitants of more righteous, religious, which is spiritual, and godly, right? He says Vedic or Vedic literature describes their lifetimes as lasting as 10,000 years. So when the Christians read about, you know, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Mm -hmm. This is what they're talking about. Exactly. In my father's house, there are many mansions. There are many dimensions, many density levels. There's many um, realms. There's many cosmic zones or planets in this mm-hmm. universe. And on the higher planets, all right, the inhabitants are more religious and godly and righteous. And they live, you know what I'm saying, to ages 10,000 years and longer. Okay, so mm-hmm. you know we talking about this. This is why this is one of the lowest planes because the lifespan here is seventy years on the average. You know, falling right. from one hundred and twenty, falling from Methuselah who lived to be nine hundred and sixty nine years. Okay, which is nearly a thousand years, and it says that, um, and that was only a day unto the Lord. A thousand years is only a day unto the Lord, based on the Bible and the Quran. So. Niggas has never even lived a day on this planet. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as um, as far as that is concerned, based on um, the amount of years in which that has been accounted for, based if it's based on mythology or whether it's based on actual fact. But yet, on these other mm-hmm. planets, if you cross over, as we say, in your um, and your heart is lighter than a feather. Remember, that's the ancient comedic philosophy, is that in order to transcend um, and not to have to incarnate and go to these possible other um, higher planes of existence, your heart will have to be lighter than a feather. If your heart is heavier than a uh-huh. feather, then guess yeah. what? You're reincarnating and coming back here. And animus, which is this um, creature, which looks like a head of a crocodile, body of something else, you know, it's this monstrous creature, which is standing right near the scales of balance, which is called the scales of Mayat, um, in which that he eats the heart, which means he eats the memories and the desires. And so you come back into this plane with no memory or recollection of your last incarnation. And most of you can't remember beyond the age of two. Right. Okay. Most cannot even remember beyond the age of two. Right. No can't. You know, so um, 
That's what we're looking at. That's really what we're looking at. You know, what, what's your thoughts on the Brother L? Yes. Uh, my thoughts on that, especially when you talked about uh, blue, uh, the water, uh, the crystals uh, as being uh, spirits. Uh, I had I did uh, a breathing and meditation today in the park behind where I live, uh, uh, behind where I live, live at, and I did the breathing exercises, and I uh, and also the one nostril, left nostril, and the right nostril breathing exercise, as you right. uh, taught me. And right. it's like it always come uh, when I uh, my eyes open up, it always was blue, dark blue come out of dark blue. And I said, well, let me try this this other technique that Dr. Eileen taught me over the phone. Mm-hmm. So I tried that, and it still came out of dark blue. And right. I said, well, what, 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 what can you tell me on that? What was that experience? Well, remember, the color blue is the color of the ethereal body, so that means that you was on the etheric plane. Okay. All right. So okay. when you meditate, you're able to go into the conscious plane of the plane of force, which is the um, ethereal plane. That's what the color blue symbolizes. Remember, I said that the color blue is the color um, above your physical body because it's called your etheric body or your ethereal body. All uh, right. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I I did that today, and uh, 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 and, and I felt pretty good because when I when I got through. I got up uh, and walked away. I was like I was a lot more energized, you know. Right. Uh, uh, right. Because then I was. He was working with etheric energy, which is um, prana. Okay. Did that have anything to do with the uh, the kundalini? Yeah. The chakras, the kundalini. Yeah, all of that. It's because yeah. um, bringing energy into um, your body, you're bringing energy mm-hmm. into your chakra centers. And that affects um, the kundalini, which that creates an upswelling of energy. So your melanin is able to absorb prana, which is this particular ethereal energy, I mean, which that you were seeing because you was tuned into the plane of force. So you was able to receive much more prana than normal because you was in a um, somewhat of a um, trance-like state. And when you go right. into a trance-like state, that's when you're able to absorb more prana or more energy or chi or chi, as they refer to it as, um, is when you're in that particular mode, especially if you're conscious about it and you're doing it consciously and you're going in with that intent and you're able to absorb more. And by doing so, you create a longevity or a you lengthen um, your DNA um, strand. I wish that give you a longer lifespan. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's a known fact that, you know, if you practice qi, um, qigong for two years, you know, you would have added, you know, more than five years to your life. All right. You know, I knew, I knew, so. I knew it had something to do but when you kept on talking about the etheric, uh, the etheric plane, you had the blue. And I said, that's what I experienced right. today. Right. That's what exactly. I experienced today. And when I got up right. got through doing them, my exercises, my uh, meditation and breathing exercises, and I walked away, I felt a, a lot more energized. You know, I walked across right. the grass, and, and, like, I was a lot more fast than I came when, when I first came out in the park. No doubt. So I knew I had no to tap into those uh, kundalini chakras, especially the spinal right. uh down in the spine with the uh, the fire, the, the, what they call the serpentine fire. Right, exactly. Yes. Well, the more that you are able to accumulate, the more you'll create an upswelling of energy in your spine, which is at your um, sacral bone area, which is your cotyledonal bone, and you're able to um, raise that energy through your chakra system with your endocrine glands up your spinal column and you're able to develop certain gifts, you know, what is called siddhas, uh, which is based on um, telepathy, telepathics, telekinesis, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairgestance, clairsentience, you know, 
it's like chemistry, right. various, um, you, you, you start to develop these various um, gifts. Yes, uh, uh, my, uh, it was kind of like it was kind of hard for me for somebody, for it was hard for someone to make me mad if they said some said something uh, very insulting to me, because that was the kind, of, kind of plane I was on. You know, it made me more uh, a lot more friendlier and more um, like I say, uh, 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 my mind was more at rest or at ease, as so to speak. Right. Got you, got you. Yeah. Right, right. So I could, uh, okay. It had me like I can deal with the, uh, people a whole lot more better than I normally do. Right. right. Check this out, brother, because according to Black Wash the White Out, uh, White Out, Black Wash the White Out, um, Black Out the White Wash, excuse me, uh, written by um, Dr. Suzar. Um, She states that humanity first prototype began as long-lived, godlike, ethereal, hermaphroditic beings that gradually polarized into opposite sexes and solidified into flesh form. Hmm. So that means um, when you make the transition, you know what I'm saying? And if based on your vibratory rate, based on your frequency, based on your conscious level, and remember the seven states of consciousness that correlate to the seven Elohims, you have interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, subconsciousness, magnetic, superconsciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. Those are the seven. Based on the level which that you pass, you know, which is based on the predominance of your thought patterns, on what you've yes. told yourself about your lifetime. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. That is the level in which that you will be raised at at the point of death. And if you do not get beyond the subconscious, which is the heart plane, hence weighing the heart upon, you know, against the feather, then you have to come back, you know. So that means if you reach what is known as super consciousness, magnetic consciousness or infinite consciousness, then you are in your immortal body. Therefore, you have made it beyond reincarnation and therefore do not have to reincarnate. However, if you do not make it based on your attachment, based on, and I give you a good example of heaven and hell. Do they exist? Of course they do, but they are state of mind. All right? In other words, um, if, right, they exist as state of mind. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what exists after the, um, the physical body. Not only is the crystalline water vapor which um, exit the body upon exhalation, you know what I'm saying, which um, the spirit is being pulled out the body, you know what I'm saying, which deals with um, centrifugal or centrifugal force um, in that particular guard. Um, what is it? Centrifugal force, which deals with the um, pulling factor. Because that's what happens. Upon death, you exhale. Remember, when you come into the body at birth, you inhale. Right. You know, you come in and you, you inhale uh-huh. as you exhale. Exactly. You exhale. So life is nothing but insulation and exhalation. And in between that, that is what holds the physical composition together, your your, your molecular structure together, is insulation and exhalation. So it's based on the breath. So the more you can balance the breath, inhaling and exhaling, the more you keep your physical composition together and the more you lengthen your life. All right? All right. So, um, not just lengthen your life, you can also gain immortality because um, there's the ability you know, to dematerialize and materialize or rematerialize. All right? That is something else in which that is dealing with the rainbow body or the golden body in which that, um, the audience needs to look up and start to research and study on. Okay? Yeah. Um, uh, anything, that you, anything you want to build on that, Brother L? Uh, yes, sir. I noticed that uh, when I did go into the uh, meditation trance and the breathing exercises, I know for some reason I always had the picture of my great great grandmother, which is mm. a Choctaw Moor. She was always right, coming to the exactly. picture, and I, I don't even have her on my mind. Have her on my mind at the time, and I'm like, right. wow, what is this about? You know. Mm-mm. What is this? What is this so about? You, so, so, 
Right. So what you think it is? What you think that's about, brother? Uh, you know what I'm saying because it, look at it. Because cause here you are, you know, subconsciously, you know, whatever you think about is going to rise to the surface because that's what the subconscious mind does is brings to the, you know, things to the conscious mind. It's up to you, though, as the seer to, do, you know, to decide on, you know, what, you know, you think about it, what is being revealed to you, as well as also, you know, the symbolism in it, you know, uh, so... Mm-hmm. So I, I feel I, I under, my understanding of it is that I'm really uh, connecting with my great great right. grandmother. Right. That it, yes, I'm really connecting. We are connecting, and uh, as they say, or let or what other people talk about, necromancy, uh, uh, connecting with, uh, with the spirits, you know, of, with your ancestors, right. and I believe mm-hmm. I believe that that's the, what I was doing, but unconsciously I was doing it. Unconsciously, because I, that, was, okay. that wasn't what I was intending to do. I was intending to go out right. here, sit out here, breathe, do my breathing exercises and the breathing techniques you taught me, and everything. But she would always pop up when my eyes were closed, a, a picture. Right, right. Her face would always pop up at me. Well, remember uh, that's the pattern was that you following. You know, obviously, um, you know. A lot of her genealogy has popped up, you know, within you, mm-hmm. you know, and the simple fact of it is that that's obvious based on, you know, from what we've been able to tell so far that if she keep popping up to you, then, you know, that, that normally means that this gene or DNA which that is popping up ancestrally through you because that's where um, the ancestors go to after they die is actually into you, you know what I'm saying? In other words, back into um, the concentration of the physical body back into the physical body, you know what I'm saying, to become, you know, an egg or sperm or whatever the case is, but that comes by way of the breath and by way of your genealogy and by way of, um, you know, as we would see, you know, as we also call your, your genes or whatever the case is. So, you know, that's how, that's how that happens, you know. Mm-hmm. So we analyze that, you know, that, we can see that's what grandma really, you know, great grandma was really, you know, on. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, we can see All that. Right. We definitely can see You know. Um, matter of fact, there's a good, good, good book in which that um, everyone definitely need to um, get. All right, let me get to it right quick. It's an excellent book. Let me see. Hopefully I can get it. All right. Um, this is the secret doctrine of Madame Bavasky. Now, she writes that the first race to evolve on Earth was astral beings, a race pure in spirit. All right. Okay. Then she said the second race was known as Hyperborean race. They used to live on a now banished continent in the northern sea- ocean. The third race was known or called the Elamorians or Lemurians, who fell because of interbreeding with the earthly elements. Mm. All right. Now, now understand what all of this is meaning, because you're talking about astral beings, ethereal beings, and then how we finally came fleshly beings. She says the fourth race was known as the Atlanteans, who possessed psychic powers and who lived in um, gigantic cities, and a great flight destroyed them. Then she okay. goes on to say the fifth race, the fifth race was known as the founders of ancient Egypt culture, and soon they will rise to the pinnacle of spirituality. The sixth and the seventh race or races will come to exist in the future when the present fifth root race um, experiences a racial. Check this out now. When the present fifth Root race experienced a racial calamity. Hmm. Okay. Which will cut it into two halves. The same occurred also happened to the fourth and the third race. The Lemurians, the sixth and the seventh root races, will also experience a racial calamity. Okay? So. 
if we don't get this thing right, you know what I'm saying, um, as far as the so-called races are concerned, um, even Madame Bavaski say that it would result in um, these particular races, uh, which is these particular fifth um, race, even the sixth and the seventh root race um, may even experience that. All right, so that means um, we definitely got to get this right because based on um, all the information that we've been gathering, the indigenous people around the planet have been saying that we're now going into the fifth dimension or the fifth world. You right. know? And so we'll be dealing with energy. So we'll be dealing with a lot of energy. Okay? Okay, Now, now check this out. Now, we talk about the Choctaw. Um, let's look what the Choctaw says because they was called also the Blackfoot. Uh, they was also called um, the Tar Hill. But check this out. This is what they teach. They teach that every star was once a human being. Hmm. Well, that's because every human being was once a star. <laughs> Scientists have found out that the physical body or the physical composition is composed of stardust particles. The Dakota hmm. tribe speaks of the spirit in the skies often descended to earth in human form. The Hopis called them Kachina. Now, the Iroquois tells us that a woman fell from the skies. Now, guess what? That is the same told to us within the um, oracles of the Zulu, um, bo- um, the bones of the Zulu oracles, um, Zulu bone oracles, that's the name of it, by um, the guy who was interviewed by David Icke, or some people call him Icky. David Icky, but mm-hmm. he's David Ike. But um, Creed Moutois, in his book, um, Zulu Bone Oracle, he speaks of the fact that the woman was called Macabre, as in the Macabre, and that the last planet that we was on before we became the Earth was our sixth, uh, was the um, sixth um, planet that we, uh, fifth planet, excuse me, that we resided on prior to coming to this sixth planet was the planet Mars, which was the red planet, and that we was there prior to coming here, and that we impregnated our women, and they transformed themselves into macabres, and they was able to travel um, to the planet Earth, you know what I'm saying, during the time of destruction. I'll get to that destruction um, information in a second here, but the Arika um, teaches that man came from a previous world. Now, Algonquin hmm. tells of the script descended from the skies upon the skies of man. In other words, we came as spirits and we descended from the skies and took on the elements, as we said, as Madame Bavaski said, of the earthly elements, elements, and became man form. And we know that because you have iron in your body, you have silver in your body, you have gold, mercury, you have arsenic, you have copper, you have, you know, oxygen. You have all of these elements. Whether it's the elements off the um, periodical chart, or whether it's elements off the back of the goddamn cereal box. You are made up of elements. You see what I'm saying, brother? <laughs> That's right. So right. You know what? Now the, the oddest thing right, you talk Chippewa. about, madam. Okay, great. No, I'm just getting ready to say the Chippewa told of Besuni Yanika, which means a man from the stars. The Cree speaks of the Sky Father along with the Trickster, all right, aiding man and taught man civilization. The Osage refers to um, the Mekati or the Mekaki, or which you call the star people. Now, the Amazulu people in Africa, the word Amazulu means sky people. Okay? Now, you get this book called The Star Ancestors by Nancy Red Star. She states, when it was time to populate this earth, many spirits came from other planets. As the spirits entered the atmosphere, they took on the atomic structure which formed into a body. When we exit, we dematerialize the atomic structure. Wow. Okay. Um, well, go ahead, brother. I didn't want to um, go ahead. Um, it's okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I, I was uh, 
when you brought up Madame Blavatsky, um, I'm looking across my living room of one of my bookshelves, and there's uh, the Secret Doctrine Part One and Part Two. But, oh uh, yeah, that's it. And I couldn't, you know, the reason I'm glad I'm talking to you right now because I really couldn't understand those books. You know, I, I really yes. wasn't in that far in my cosmologics, uh, my cosmogenics, mm-hmm. and I wasn't that far right. into it until I started studying right. more science. Right. Well, brother, you know, I, you know, I'm probably one of the best ones to break this shit down the easiest. Okay. You know, I, I break this stuff down to layman terms. So that everybody understands what the hell is going on, whether it's a whether it's um a street nigga or whether it's a damn Harvard educated bourgeoisie boule nigga. Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I hear you, boy. <laughs> right. We'll get it, we'll get it popping in one way or another. All right. All right. You know, All right. I, I, if I have to go to my educated, you know, college voice, or whether it's just me chilling on the streets, chilling, and me and you just kicking it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And be getting it. All right. How it comes, that's the way it comes. That's the spirit in which that has moved me that day. Yeah. You know? So, check this out. So, we know that basically the spirit, which is a crystalline energy source, right? Water vapor, crystalline water vapor. Right, which is a star particle. That's basically what all this is, brother. That's what all this is adding up to. Mm-hmm. We know that 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls into the planet Earth daily. So we took on this stardust material, which is called the element, and we condensed and we became part of it. That's God. God became its creation. Kundalini prana. A prana kundalini became its creation. She didn't create something else. She became her creation. She became it. All right. So, um, so the theosophists insist that man is definitely older than the eight species, and we concur that because the eight mm-hmm. is part of the experimentation to make mankind. <laughs> exactly. Okay. They say that the first man was Ethereum, which is a light being, whose form, you know what I'm saying, over the course of years and ages became more condensed until it attuned itself to the slowest vibration of material plane, which is the earth. And it assumed an apparent solid physical body. You appear to be solid, but guess what? 99.9999% of your atomic structure is empty space. Right. That means only 1% of you appears to be solid. You're not that, a solid being. That explains a holographic. Uh, uh, right. Remember, about holograph. right. You get it. That explains the holographs. So you have what they taught you in school, the three levels. You have solid, liquid, and gas. Now, think about it. You have all three of them right now in your body. You appear to be a solid, a fleshly, material being. You have liquid in your body, which is 75% water. You have gas in your body, which is the breath of life. So you are a condensed being of all three of these states. But see, they only tell you about three of these states. Go to the Rosicrucian teachings and you get the other four. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. You have your, you have your, you have your um, chemical ether. You have life ether. You have light ether, and you have thought ether. Those are the other four states that they never told us about. They just told you solid, liquid, and gas. A, B, C. One, two, three. Those are the ethers. Those are the ether, uh, the the four ethers of the etheric body, right? Right, the four mm-hmm. etheric body, mm-hmm. which is what's in chemical ether. So above gas is chemical ether. Mm-hmm. Then you have life ether, L-I-F-E, life ether. Then you have light ether, L-I-G-H-T. Then you have thoughts or mental ether. And it's from that 
thought ether in which that you fell to a light ether because thought travels 24 billion miles per second. Light travels right. only 186,000 miles per second. Sound, which is um, a form of ether, which is light ether, travels 1,129 feet per second, you know, in which that produces the chemicals, you know what I'm saying, or the hormones, you know, which is the dendrites and the synapses as they fire off, you know what I'm saying? This all is part of this sequence here of what is known as chemical ether, in which that produces the gas um, or give you the um, tangent of the gas in which that forms later on, you know, the liquid in which that condenses even further to become a flesh or material or a physical being, which is a solid, apparent solid. It's an apparent solid. It's not actually a solid. It appears to be. So such materialization descended into the entire visible seen universe. People in it, not only Earth, but all third-dimensional planets. Mm -hmm. You see this? So this, yeah. this, this hasn't happened just to this planet. There's other third-dimensional planets where this same shit is going on. It's called mm -hmm. parallel Earths or parallel universes. Or better yet, parallel worlds. So thus, this condensation of this spirit builds the body that appears to be born. It's this ethereal body in which that builds the <coughs> physical body in which that appears to be born. Matter of fact, J.E. Boyd pointed out um, a regular pattern in the planets distance from the sun. And according to Boyd's law, he calculated that there should be a planet between Mars and Jupiter. Now, this goes back to what I was talking about. Now, Ober, Professor Ober, he speculated that the asteroid belt was the ruins of a fifth planet. Scientists, many scientists today, agree with this philosophy. Hmm. All right? In the astrological sense, Lucifer, the sun of the morning, the fallen mm -hmm. angel, actually was the planet located between the two planets now called Mars and Jupiter. It was called Moldic. Or Vulcan, hmm. right? Which is called which is called the tongue right. of fire, all right? Within the Sumerian text. Now y'all can get this from Zachariah Ascension's um, information. Mm -hmm. um, he spoke about it, you know, within his book, The Twelfth Planet. All right. Now what is calculated is that there was a there was an asteroid. Now it says long ago that Modic was a third dimensional planet with a full conscious life form upon it that was humanoid in shape. Since life form was not restricted by reincarnation, but rather stepped in and out of form at will. In other words, there was a force upon us. Now it is based on our fallen level of consciousness. In other words, you put yourself into this state of a heaven or a hell. The solar right. system at this time consists of two suns. All right? The sun itself and Jupiter, which is called the blue sun. Those were the two suns in the solar system. This is why they, um, many years ago, they um, um, sent missiles to Jupiter in order to um, blow um, Jupiter up and to ignite it back into a blue sun. Dr. <laughs> Phil Valentine spoke about this years ago. And they just, did this back in the, they just did this, right, they did this back in the mid-90s. Y'all can look this up. It's on. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube or you know on um, on the internet. So there's many accounts that Modic, who has been called Vulcan, Lucifer, uh, Phoenix, or Astra. That's what these various names are. But if you go to it, you'll find out that the loss of this planetary body in the solar system resulted in the inequality of sexes on the Earth. The energies of Venus and Mars normally would be integrated by the Maldekian planetary fill as the energy waves of each planet intersects with the Earth. Without the integration of the energy by modic field, a slow growing separation occurred between male and female sexes. This is how this separation came about. I'm, I'm explaining to you how this happened. Wow. Unity slowed, fell away, and the Atlanteans are, uh, became more prone to the effects as they drew so much from this energy from the planetary grid. This was the war in heaven that was the manifestation or manifested on earth. All right? Now, all right, um, 
it goes on to say that this asteroid hit Modic and destroyed it along with the um, Modic, its moon was destroyed. All right? Now, y'all can go and check this out. You don't have to believe me. Do your research. All right? You have um, you have um, the Urantian book, which that speaks about this. You have um, Sean David Morton uh, from the Delphi Association newsletter, which that speaks about this. You know, this is something which that has been told for um, hundreds and thousands of years. This is nothing new. All right? This is new to you. All right? Right. But right. check this out. Like I said, the explosion impelled the survivors to abandon the red planet, which is Mars, in the immigration to Earth, as told in the legends of the Amazulu people and the Hopi natives. If you don't believe me, get the book, The Guys and the Spacemen in the Ancient West by W. Raymond Drake. All right? So Venus was forced closer to the sun where it turned into a burning furnace, um, which also caused the Venetians to have to uh, migrate to Earth. All right? I'm telling you how all of this shit happened. Wow. Now, Secret Places of the Lion, written by George H. Williamson, he thinks that the spirits, counterfeit, soulless, clones, non-humans, astral entities, non-permanent atom beings, Human artificials or earthbound mankind, um, you know, which came from Modic, was something released onto a different etheric plane and were not welcome on the other culture solar um, planets, but was forced to incarnate on Earth. This is where you get this story of the fallen angels from. In uh-huh. other words, in the alteration of the molecular structure of Modic, all spirits in physicality. Um, who had to become physical at that point in time, became trapped in the dream they was creating and was unable to leave and ascend out of the form until the ancient, check this out now, until the ancient Chemites was able to invoke the spirits into the physical form in which they was able to make other human beings, um, other mankind, which is, of course, these beings that we're talking about. Um, this is how the Mogit beings um, these Madekians and Modic beings also got here too. But this is another story. I ain't gonna get too much in that. You know what I mean? Because this 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 goes this goes a little bit too far for Cass and I don't want y'all to say Dr. Aline is way out there. No, Dr. Aline <laughs> knows some shit in which that you might need to study. Yes, sir. You know, so you can get a clearer understanding of your life existence upon this planet Earth and why things are going the way that they are. And what you can do at this time in order to help with being an aid or being a destruction, in other words, a hindrance to the progress, okay? Now, you can get the Lost Cities of Ancient Lemuria and the Pacifics by David um, Childress. You can get the Lost Continent of Mu by James Church Ward. You know, you can get all these. Now, you say that I'm bugging. Well, go to... Uh, Robert Temple's book, The Serious Mysteries. All right? The earliest Egyptians believed Sirius was the home of the departed souls, which the Dokans also believed. Mm-hmm. So I'm not tripping. Right, no, not at all. Matter of fact, even Alice Bailey said in The Secrets of the Sun, Sirius was all the hidden. The facts of our, check this out now, in the secrets of the sun, Sirius are hidden the facts of our cosmic evolution and incidentally thereof of our solar system. This is what Alice Beatty said. Now you got to understand, hmm. these individuals in which that is running this planet are theosophical members, Rosicrucian members, mm-hmm. Masonic, Shriver members. While your behinds are talking about the Illuminati and you're not getting this information properly and you're giving it to people like it's some spooky shit, you know, and not understanding your own gifts and power and neither your neither the mystery of life nor death or reincarnation, you can't explain none of this. No. You haven't already know too damn know anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you like Bobby Tell y'all niggas that 
Um, he who reads one book knows nine. Exactly. Okay. So we ain't talking about a nigga who just read one book. I already damn gave you about 50 damn books already. We're just damn within the last hour. Wow. Because I all these, I'm telling you about, I have on my bookshelf and I've read. Studied and comprehended. Exactly, yes. Yeah. This is why I can put this information together the way that I do. And I want everybody else to be having the same ability to do this shit. Because it's the only way we're going to get out of this predicament. Yeah. And it's with this information that you shut them up. Right? Matter of fact, go to Serious Mysteries again like we was talking about. And as a matter of fact, um, Robert Temple breaks down some things. He says that the north-south section of the Pyramid of Cheops, which is cool from shows two so-called air shafts leading out of the king's chamber, all right? We know that these um, shafts point towards where? We know that they point towards Draco, and we know that they point towards Orion, Mm. all right? We know that. Based on what the Egyptians said, that if you go towards, if you are in the shaft and your body is magnetized and pulled up through the vortex from the bottom of the pyramid, because that's where the um, furrows would go at when they passed on, their body would be placed there. Or even in initiation, you would get placed there for three days and three nights in the, um, in the sarcophaga. And you would be, um, under, you would be sedated under um, meditation state, and you are able to travel throughout those shafts to those particular solar systems and constellations. Now, if you leave your body, which means if you're passed on, there's a known fact that your spirit hovers around your physical body three days after death. So during that time period, your body is also placed in the sarcophagus at the, um, in Cheops. Um And based on how you want to go, this is for the king, for the royal bloodline. If they did not want to reincar- reincarnate, then they would go towards Draco. If they mm. wanted to reincarnate, you know what I'm saying? Then they would go towards Sirius or Ryan. All right? Now, this so is everybody's not like getting recorded. Well, based on that's, that's, that was because, you know, the pharaohs and the pharaohs, they had access to higher information. They had access to this information that we're talking about. Okay. All right? Now, you can get this information from the Egyptian Mysteries by Lucy... Lambie, L-A-M-I-E, Lambie, Lambie. All right, so our solar system receives energy from the three main sources now. These are the three great waves of energy which um, sweeps, you know, cycling into our solar system, the main one coming from Sirius. So it's a known fact that the so-called Ethereum Sirians the so-called Lemurians and the Atlanteans, or higher aspects of our soul. And the Lemurians, be of a higher aspect, can telepath, teleport, manifest at will, and use higher vibratory skills. They travel in light vehicles called macabres, which is these orbs in which that people speak about, or light fields of the spiritual soul. These stargate vectors or par- um, portals, which are etheric in the dimensional energy alignment, which occurs between two points in interstellar space, right? In other words, a star gate allows higher vibratory energy to pass through it. As we talk about the span of the whole universe, which is 76 quintillion miles in diameter. So mm. this is the, these are what these so-called black holes or wormholes are talking about. These are, these are um, energy um, um, intergalactic or etheric intergalactic dimensional alignments, right? Or two point or these various points in space. Now, the ethereal photonic energy is being along the so called space time continuum, passing through a space, a subspace vector, 
Now, moreover, you know, like you said, thought travels 24 billion miles per second, light travels 186,000 miles per second. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind, because according to um, Einstein's theory of relativity, the mass of the body grows in relation to the increase in its velocity. So a mass equals energy that reaches the speed of light would be in what infinitely large. All right, I'll give you a better example. In 1997, um, Dr. Gerald Finberg supplied a mathematical proof that there is a counterpart to Einstein's mass or his theory of relativity. He named it particles, which is called tachyon particles, which move infinitely fast, a billion times faster than light. Hence, these tachyon particles actually equals thought. This is thought. Remember, thought travels 24 billion miles per second. Light only travels yeah. 180,000 miles per second. So tachyon energy, or these particles, is thought. Yet it appears to exist when they are reduced to the speed of light because it don't, it, it, it's not reduced. It becomes light. Thought becomes light at 180,000 on 186,000 miles per second. Because you have slowed thought down from 24 billion miles per second to 186,000 miles per second, so it transformed from thought to light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right? I'm trying to explain to you how we get out here. All right? Now, there's a known fact that a macabre, which is a thought vehicle, would break the light barrier with a light boom to that which is symbolic to a sound boom as a, as a light flash. So the macabre transformed to a beam of tachyon, which is thought pulse waves, right? And will accelerate to incredible speeds, right? So that means that you were able to move in your macabre at the speed of thought, which is 24 billion miles per second. Now, I'm saying all this because Remember, I told you earlier that the Amazulu people, Krita Mutwa, the, the um, shaman, South African shaman healer, he mm-hmm. stated that we, this was our planet that we're now on. Earth is the sixth planet that we're on. But we existed on the red planet, which is Mars, as the fifth planet. But we, even before that, we came from the star constellation Sirius, as the Dogon say. So that means that we existed on several other planets prior to coming here. So that means that we are planet jumpers. So we are definitely in tune with the universe. Right. So how did we jump planets? We jump planets by using the macabre. There's a technique by Javala Melchizedek called the 18 breath technique, 24 breath technique, and the 28 breath technique in which that transform your physical body into a ship. Macabre, which is a light vehicle which is called the Flaming Chariot. You go to the Book of the um, um, book of Kings and look up Elijah. Yeah, and Elijah yeah was it does. Up, yeah. And, he, and Elijah was taken up on a Flaming Chariot, which is the word Flaming Chariot within Hebrew is called Makabah. The word Makabah. So the people that wrote the Bible, uh, that King James had hired to write the Bible, they definitely knew the science, didn't they? There's no doubt about it, brother. No doubt about it. I'm going to hold on. I think Brother Olabala is on the line. Let me go and see. If all right, him. all right. Brother Olabala, you on here? Brother Olabala, you on here? Okay, I thought that was Brother Olabala. Um, but that's what's going on, um, Brother L. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully, you know, people are getting some of this information. Um, you got anything that you want to build on that concerning um, what we've been talking about so far? Yes. Uh, like I said before, the people that uh, King James and Hyde, uh, the right that, uh, the right those books in the Bible, they, they knew the science. Uh, they were Rosicrucians and Freemasons and other uh, other esoteric orders. So, but they wrote it in a way that the, the, they knew the masses would never grasp on um, what they were right. talking about, uh, dealing exactly. with the uh, the sun, moon, uh, Mercury, Venus, all the planets, all the planets, uh, the zodiac, 
and everything is 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 uh is all filled with I mean the Bible is all filled with that. The cosmology. Mm-hmm. Filled with it. Right. Uh the Passover, uh they talk about really what Easter actually really means, which both the Easter and the Passover really is basically it's the same thing. Uh or the, uh, in the Hebrew and the Jews, they know it as known as the Passover, and uh, in the Eastern, as the Easter sunrise services, dealing with the sun right. passing through the equator. When the day right. uh, now the daylight outlasts uh, the darkness of the of, of the night, you know it, it, it's it's, uh, it's it's really fantastic, really fantastic. When you really really, uh, the more I get uh, the, the talking with you. Studying with you and everything, read uh, the first world order. Uh, I keep reading the first world order. I don't read. I read, read it once. I don't know how many times, because there's always something that I missed. Uh, uh, yeah. How far that? Uh, how fast? I mean, <clears throat> I was looking at the speed of sound, the speed of thought. So I always forget. Then I got to go back into the book and read it all over again to really refresh my. Right. That's a refresh, of course, in my mind. Uh, uh, to, to, I mean to really get it in my mind, get get it really synced into it, in my head. Right, right. You know, you know, it, it, it's it's you know, yeah. It's uh, uh, I read other books of of uh, other books I get like the uh, part one and part two of the uh, I believe the esoteric the hidden meaning of the Bible by Higgins. Right. Uh, what's his name? Geoffrey Higgins. No, it's right. not Geoffrey Higgins. Higgins. I think it is Dr. Higgins, yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. he deals in a lot of cosmology in his books. And, uh, right. and a lot of things you talked about, you touched on tonight, what he talks about. Right. Mm-hmm. And, it, and, it, and what you tell me is a lot helpful, especially the understanding the part one and part two of Madame Blavatsky's The Secret Doctrine. Right. Because I had a hard time with that, to really get into it, you know, to really – what this woman was talking about. Right, and, right, uh, exactly. She had made a statement in her book called the ISIS, I think the ISIS, not the ISIS papers, it's called ISIS, um, you, you know the Unveiled. book. Yes, ISIS mm-hmm. uh, Unveiled. Unveil. At the end of the part mm-hmm. two book, at the end of the book, she said, you people that call these other people, call these people niggers, these are the people, are the true scientists, you know. And I'm saying, wow. I said, this woman, this is this is a this is a 19th century woman, European woman. Right. So right. she really one of the Europeans that really knew the truth. Right. Who who the true scientists are? Right. First of all, on the radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. <laughs> No doubt. All right, all right. It's always going to be somebody in the building on First World or the radio. You can't want to see some of that for the consciousness today. First World or the radio every Wednesday evening. You got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. I've seen the levels in time order important. The most common thing is the most important thing.
intention straight out. All right, so you've sold the idea of what the various languages was to piece the puzzle of the ancient history to go back to the again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite to take this level up a notch. And we're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophy, theory, shit that works. You know, that's the way to play the game. You said, you stupid black people can call it Ireland. What we did was give a hard line in the sand between the different definitions. That's right, you were First World Order Radio. That is our new commercial. And no doubt, we're here, and you're going to make this impact be felt. We're going to go to the radio lines right now, and we're going to bring going 347, area code 347, you're on the line. Well, how y'all doing? Oh, fine, boy. Really? How you doing? Good. Peace. Chilling, chilling. Brother Eileen, brother Al. Um, Peace. Yeah, um, let me see. Okay. So my question is, it might be a little bit off topic, but it is uh, it is pertaining to the topic at hand. Um, my question is, is video games. Um, mm-hmm. my first the first sub question I got for that is, what psychological or physical effects does that have on the human psyche or whatever you want to call it? Um. At this time, like, because since this is the age of video games, you know, I wanted to know that. Right. Well, if you go back and watch the movie Lomo, man, um, the European Albion has um, seen that he's earthbound. In other words, we're talking about 20 to 40 percent have cusp by pineal gland. They want to be able to survive, and so they want to place themselves in an the artificial world or reality, apparent reality, in which that is called virtual reality. Um and also they want to do what is called um, transhumanism um, or trans, um, and actually do what is called, a, there's a soul chip in which that they have um, out, and which they actually, um, since the early 2000s, actually they, we was talking about it. But this soul chip is able to be, um, actually be inserted in your brain and actually is able to download all your memories. And so they're able to take that and place it in a robotic, Android um, figure or resemblance or likeness of yourself, and that's what they are trying to do now. And so that is game. So to them, that would be um, immortality. Right, right, All right. So this and is also, what they plan on doing. It's, uh... it just, this is just beginning stages of what we're talking about with this um, video game shit. This is not. This is this, this is not just for games. They they plan on taking this thing to the hill of what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, also, also too, it's a it's a greater form of mind control. I see, I see the people that are like they're hype or they're anticipated or they have the anxiety for these particular things. And I see it. Right. It's like it's worse than TV. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like yeah, it is. When they were, when they have a new because they have the new consoles coming out soon, so. If they saying now that all of these people went to the store and pre ordered them already, the, the, the PS4 and all of that, that Gina sold out. Right. So I'm like, damn, right. you know? Yeah. So, you know, it's a greater form of mind control, in my opinion. Also, like, the yeah. music, they, like, especially with fighting games, I know fighting games mm-hmm. was, was the mind control is based upon uh, musical mind control because. If you play a fighting game without the music on, it hurts your head. Mm. Wow. Yeah. If you mm. see, if you if you like, if you turn down the volume all the way down to zero, it looks like just foot is going on the screen. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And also too, uh, the the zombie the zombie um, apocalyptic game. You know, and I noticed. They they like to use the the name L. They use the name L a lot because they had this game that came out re- recently called The Last mm-hmm. Us. I don't know if y'all heard about it. And the first char- the the main character, his name is Joe L. <laughs> right. And the little girl that he's with, his her name is Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know not coincidental. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And the um the virus that's in the in the game is called Cordyceps. That's what turned the zombies into zombies. Good info, what? That's mm-hmm. going to be good info. Because that all mm-hmm. correlates to the fact of them um, now talking about the zombies, you know, and, um, you know, and obviously producing some type of mass, I guess you would say mass pandem- uh, pandemic, you know what I'm saying, um, with the zombies or those who possess zombie-like tendencies, you know what I'm saying? And um, mm-hmm. I know there's a disease out now, and we said it's called Magellan, or Magella, in which that is uh, basically a flesh-eating disease in which that is allegedly coming from out of the sky, which is coming from the chemtrails. Mm-hmm. You know? Those who don't have yeah. strong immune system, you know, they are having um, problems, you know, um, with that. Yep. There was a white woman on TV with that, too. A, uh, I think it was on um, what was it called? I think it was on Amazing Race. She had the um, the Magellan disease, hmm. right? Yeah, it was eating her skin. Yeah, yep. That's all. That's all it right there. Yep. Yeah, and I yeah, noticed yeah. in the game too, they had a lot of a lot of black people in the game. Matter of fact, they did a ritual in the game where they killed two of the black people that actually helped the main character, the uh, the, mm. the, the big brother. He killed. He shot himself in the head, and the little brother turned into a zombie, and they had to kill him. Right, right. Yep. And the leader, the they had a leader of the um of the clan. It's called Fireflies. I'm like, come on, they giving it up? Because the Firefly, exactly. the Firefly is like, is basically represented the illumination of pineal gland, or the uh, illumination because right. it, it holds golden light. So right, and they had right. a black a black woman was leading the fireflies. I mean, come on, mm, right? You know, so all the ritual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No doubt wow. about it. Because I mean, because the disappearing act, you know, um, there's, there's there's a disappearing act in which that is taking place by 2045. Um, the Europeans don't see themselves here. We're talking about specifically those with the consequent pineal gland because it's going to be too hot. You know, and the upswelling of Kundalini energy would cause them to spontaneous combust. You know what I'm saying? And this is the reason why mm-hmm. they're trying their best to, to put all this energy block up. You know what I'm saying? With the chemtrails, with the harp, you know, tapping into the ionosphere, with um, the genetically modified organisms, you know, in the foods. You know, all these things is ways in order to, um, is based on survival. We know that by 2045, you know, that is supposed to be the end of the so-called white race. There's an article, matter of fact, from the New York Times. Um, it says in a few years, there were only, matter of fact, there was 4, 1694. So this, this, this article came out April the 16th, 1994. It says in a few years, there will only be one person of working age in these countries for every two retirees. In 1994, Italy became the first country in the world with more people over the age of 65 than young people under the age of 15. The article goes on to say that the um, estate research organization said earlier this year that the numbers of Italians, currently 57 million, actually shrunk by 5,265 in 1993, with the average Ooh. birth rate mm. a statistical 1.21 or 1.21 percent, lowest in the world. So in Italy, fertility is much less the requirement for the replacement of the day, said um, Joseph. Um, Grindlats of the UN Public um, Population Division. Now, that goes back to what we were just talking about because, like we were talking about, about the soul catcher. Um, this yeah. article it says, according to Nexus Magazine, October November 1996, the Daily Telegraph and the Daily Mail, July 18, 1996, it said British scientists are developing a concept for a computer chip which, when implanted in the skull behind the eye, it will be able to record a person's entire lifetime, thoughts, and sensations. Dr. Chris Winter, member of the British Telecom Artificial Life Team, predicts that within 30 years it will be possible to relive other people's lives by playing back experiences on a computer or in a robotic Android body. This wow. is the end of death 
the binding, this information with a record of the person's genes, we can recreate a person's physical, emotional, and spiritual, say Dr. Winter. He and his team of scientists at BT's and uh, Molotham Health Laboratories near Ipswich caused the chip the soul catcher. Dr. Winter says an implant chip will be like a aircraft black box and will enhance communication beyond current concepts. For example, police will be able to use it to re- to relive an attack, rape, or murder from the victim's viewpoint to um to help catch the criminal. It says I can even play back smell the sounds, the sights of my holiday to friends. Other applications include downloading an older person's experiences into a new Check this out now. Into a newborn um, by amp transplanting the chip. In other words, reincarnation. In other words, this is artificial reincarnation now. For additional information on the microchip, it says request all eyes on me, the Illuminati microchip implant, and the mark of the beast. Uh, from Frontline Magazine, May, June, um, 1996 issue. That's my man, um, Marcus Klein, who I wrote for Frontline Magazine for about four years myself. So um, this is another reason why we know um, the information that we know, because we've been doing this thing for quite some time. Um, but we appreciate you, brother, for calling in. You had any other comment or any other um, question that you want to go into? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to comment on your particular uh, share that you just gave. Yeah, so um, mm-hmm. that, too. That that too goes into why we have a lot of uh, a lot of zombies out here walking around Forty Second and all of these places out in the U.S. mainly because the U.S. got the largest amount of damn zombies out there. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying because this is the greatest uh, this is the greatest country for mind control. It's the most developed country in mind control, so to speak. Right. So I see I see that that particular share that you just gave, I see that they are making, like, templates for the way a particular human being or a person is supposed to act, you know what I'm saying? Right. And then they trigger it by buzzwords like get your education, go to school, uh, right. uh, um, brush yeah. your teeth and all of that, go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Programming. Exactly. Yeah. Matter of fact, I mean, we can see that with the um, Washington, D.C. snipers, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um you know, um, as a matter of fact, what put them to sleep was a trick of words. It was called ducking the noose. You had yep. um sheriff up there, and he was doing all this crying, and then all of a sudden he breaks out and says, a duck in the noose. The next thing you know, they have found sleep at a goddamn rest area. <laughs> yep. Somehow ditched the white van that they was in all these days, and then all of a sudden in a blue, some type of blue car. But they would sound sleep because that was the trigger word to put them to sleep was called duck in a noose. Uh. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I think it's, what, what was this, um, what was the sheriff name? Sheriff um, Bull, 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 something, something like that. But he was on TV crying. Go, just go back and watch the watch, and you can see him say those key words. This is how you know that there are Manchurian candidates, or mind control agents out here. Oh yeah. Mhm. Just don't doubt about it, brother. Appreciate you. Thank yeah, you. man. Not at all. I appreciate y'all too. Appreciate y'all too. Keep listening in. All right, boy. No Peace. Let's all go right. to four four. Area code four four. You're on the line. Greetings, brother. How you Peace. doing? Peace. All right, all right. We good. How are you? I'm good. I, um. A question that I have for you, uh, I want to pick up uh, the goddess too there until I say hello. But the question that I have, I had a um, uh, a memo sent to me from a friend of mine that he got it off Facebook. Do you know anything about some national holiday in Chicago for Moors? Yeah, there's some of the um, um, proclamations in which that was signed by um, the mayor of um, Chicago. Yeah, but that was signed um, in several cities many cities throughout the country. Um, in Charlotte, it is um, um, we have one there. Uh, we had one in Fayetteville until 
um, they got wind of um, some boys who was there, um, who was, I guess, making an uproar about it. Then they decided to strip that away. But, but there's several other cities in which that has the proclamations in place in which that is basically um, that week of Prophet Nobud birthday is a celebration, brother, yes. Brother, is that uh, a recognition to the Moors in America being recognized, or, you know, it's a lot of propaganda we, that we goes say, around? No, we would say that that is recognition, brother. You know, um, oh, yes. It's but real. They, but, they wanted, right, but they wanted to come to Fayetteville in order to um, make it real big, so I got on TV and um, told them what was really going on, you know, um, because they were trying to tie um, – the proclamation into all different types of, you know, um, so-called black stuff, and you know, and they love doing that. So we just had to get on the news, um, you know, and uh, set the record straight as best we could, you know. Um, I have the video up actually. If you go to YouTube or either to my page, More Heritage, or either to www.dralinelbay.com. That's D R A L I N E L B Y. Dralinelbay.com. You can go there and actually see the video in which I did with the proclamations, concerning the proclamations, and uh, we was on TV talking about it. Thank you, brother. All right. Appreciate you, brother. Thank yeah. you. All right. Appreciate you more. I look, I look forward to seeing you. Thank look you. Look forward to seeing you too, God. We got area code 818. Area code 818. You're on the line. Good evening, brothers. Good evening, good evening, Good evening. Um, Greg, for you both. Um, I'm just calling yeah. in because I, um, I just wanted you to know I don't think you're bugging. <laughs> in fact, a lot of the uh-huh. information that you're, I don't think you're bugging. I heard you say earlier that people think you're bugging. I don't think right. you're bugging. <laughs> yeah. um, um, well, I'm glad. At, least, at least one person isn't. <laughs> 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 Okay, in fact, a lot of information that you give is making a lot of things clear to me. Um, right. For example, earlier you were talking about, um, hmm, how hot up with this? Well, you were talking about reincarnation. Right. And you were, I don't know, I'm you have to bear with me on this one. Um, it's all right. We got, okay. we got, we got 10 minutes. Okay. Um, well, let me put it like this. I have visions. I've been having them since I was little. Right. I daydream right. a lot. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. And, okay. So when you were saying the part about, I know we are we are our ancestors, right? Right. But I was wondering about a particular vision I had, like, many years ago. And I, when the brother was talking about his grandmother or great-grandmother, it kind of brought some things to mind. And it was this one particular right. vision where I was seeing I think it was a past, something happened in the past, but it wasn't me. Right. It was, it was, um, it was like a tribal setting. But the thing right. I don't understand, maybe you can clear up for me, is that I appeared to be little. I couldn't see myself, but I was seeing a event through my eyes. You understand what I'm saying? Something yeah, was happening. I got you. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'm just wondering. Was that me in a past life, or was that my great ancestors? Right. It was, well, a big commotion. it was a big commotion going on. It was like a tribal event. I don't know whether it was a bad event or a good event, but right. there was a lot of movement around. Okay, let me explain it this way also. Um, you are a concentration of seven generations on your mother's side and seven generations on your father's side. So you have 14 generations concentrated as you, in you, as your genealogy, as your DNA. All right? We're talking about, of course, you have it further back than that, but these are the seven major ones in which that affects your life the most this time around and in this incarnation. And based on that, Sometimes vectors or portals are open through via your DNA because the word intelligence means intel-igent or intel 
I genes. In other words, inside your genes, there's someone in which that is speaking or talking from inside your genes in which that give you what we call intelligence because it's coming from inside of you, and then it says intel. So there's something in which that is being told to you. You know that light, which is DNA, is malleable and that it is based on words and frequencies on which that DNA can be changed. But DNA can also be awakened by words and frequencies, which means the telling factor, the voice from within. So this means that when you tap into your inner self, you're actually tapping into memories of not just your former incarnations, but also of your ancestral incarnations. Okay? Now, if you want your own incarnation, you have to think about where this is occurring at. Is this occurring at the front of the brain or is this occurring at the back of the brain? If it's at the back of the brain, then that is your own personal Akashic records, known as your own personal library. All right? So that is, yes, that is where your Akashic records, your past lives, your photographic memory takes place at. Now, if you're feeling the pressure from the frontal lobes, then that is your ancestors in which that is embedded inside of you, in which that is speaking through you and to you as forms of symbolism, esoteric communication, in which that you need to pick up in order to know what to do next in a particular event, or they are mainly showing you a um, past event in which that can help you in this present, or either showing you a present or a future event in which that they're trying to communicate to you. And I'll give you a good example. Um, my uncle passed away three years ago. Last year he came to me and he was upstairs. All right. Um, in our old house on Harmon Street in New York in Brooklyn. And he was cooking. And I had to go upstairs in order to go and see him. Now, stairs in your dream means to ascend. That means that you are spiritually ascending. Mm -hmm. All right? And that's because your consciousness is ascending. You're going higher in consciousness. So this would be somebody that I went into heaven to greet and meet him. When I got there, he told me that I need to read Psalms 13 and Psalm 6. As soon as I woke about that dream, I read Psalms 13 and Psalm 6. Now, if you get the Living Power of Psalms, which is one of the books that I produce, my wife and I, as well as also, there's another book called um, The Powers of Psalms, I believe. In there, it tells you that Psalms 13 is a prayer in which it's used to prevent an early death. Psalm 6 is a prayer that you use in order to prevent negative things from happening. Why did he tell me to do that? Well, guess what? I found out a few hours later as I was taking some herbs. I got choked on the herbs and could not breathe because the herbs was caught in my air passage. I thought back to what my uncle was telling me. And the solution was me simply opening my mouth. I was able to breathe through my mouth. I didn't need to breathe through my nose. So the thing was is that I needed to read Psalms 13 and Psalm 6 in order to keep me from dying because he understood that I would know what Psalms 13 and Psalm 6 meant. Hell, I wrote the book. <laughs> 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 okay? So, so this is what I'm telling you that you have to see what is being conveyed to you because they they don't just come to you. When when an ancestor comes to you through the dream, they try to convey and tell you a message in which that is is, is taking place. Mm-hmm. Okay. And see, so you okay. have to feel the pressure of where the occurrence is happening at. Like I said, if it's in front of the brain, then that's the ancestors. If it's at the back of the head, then that's your own personal cautious records. You tapped into your own past lives. That is where your reincarnation 
uh, um, your memories of the reincarnations are located at. Is that the medulla oblongata, which is at the back of the head? And the ancients in Qigong, what they would, um, what the masters in Qigong would do is actually tap at the back of the head, right up into the hollow area at the at the point on the back of the head. They would tap there 25 times, three times a day, in order to scar that area. And by scarring it, that would give you access to your past life. So you would not just get glimpses; you would be able to put pieces of this puzzle together. Because now you would begin to start having more deja vu experiences in which that you know that things in which that took place it was reminiscent to what took place prior to. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, the more deja vu experiences you have, more than likely you either travel your mentally, your mind traveled into the future, or either um, you went through um, past lives in which that was now being reflected in this. Lifetime because it went through a similar, you know, what I'm saying situation or event. Well, actually, I do both. So, well, there you go. Now you got to think about where that energy was taking place at at that particular time. Was it in the front of the head or was it at the back? And you know how you dream, and you know that and it's just like a headache. You know, what I'm saying if you got a headache. You know, well, some people tell you exactly where it is. Oh man, that's right at the um, at my temples, or that's right at the at the forehead, or that's right at the back of the head, or that's right. You see what I'm saying? So, this well, what area was the is future? Is that a, thing, wait, huh? Oh, I don't mean to cut you off. What if it's a, a a vision where I saw myself doing something in the future? I can't hear you. What if it's a vision where I saw myself doing something in the future? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Your mind went into the future. So more than likely, that means that you were using your medulla oblongata, which is at the back of the oh. head. So that means that you tap into your own personal Akashic records. In this prior incarnation, getting help from your past incarnations and your memories from mm-hmm. your past incarnation, in which that was able to project you into the future in order to solve a problem, obviously, in which that possibly could occur. That's what I'm saying. That that's... So what I'm saying is that when ancestors come to you, they're trying to convey, um, just like what Brother L was talking about, his grandmother, his great-grandmother always come to him when he's doing his meditations mm-hmm. and things. That's because he's awakening himself to spiritual communication with his, with his um, great-grandmother. And she'll be able to convey messages to him, um, you know, that way. Now, matter of fact, let me let me read a, um, a portion of my book right quick. Um, out of the womb, into the mind. There's a section in which that um, I break this down and I go into it. Let me read that right quick, and y'all can see what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Let me see if I can get to it. Okay. Let's see. All right. Um, All right. Let me see. All right, here we go. All right. No, that's not the point. Okay. All right, here it is. It's called The Astral Body and Other Astral Phenomena. This is by A.E. Powell. This is what he says. He says, in certain rare cases, a personality or a lower man may be so strongly controlled by com- um, comma, that the lower man is completely enslaved and cannot distang- um, distangled, um, disentangle itself. The link between the lower and the higher mental, the simple thread that binds it to the master, snaps in two. This is spoken of in occultism as the loss of the soul. Now, um, this is another part that I wanted to talk on, too. You come down. Okay. Um, after physical death, such an astral body is an entity of terrible pissity or potency, <clears throat> potency, 
and is unique in this, that under certain rare conditions, it can reincarnate in the world of men without no instinct save those of the animal driven only by passions, never even by emotions, with a cunning that no brutal can rival, a wickedness that is deliberate. It touches idle villainous, villainous and is the natural foe of all normal human beings. Now, this right here is talking about specifically um, these these individuals was 60 to 80% pineal gland calcification. That's what that is actually talking about. All right. That's the Europeans, that's the twenty to thirty five percent Asians, and that's the five to fifteen percent so called blacks. You know what I'm saying? Um mm-hmm. I wanna say that before because that was part of what we wanted to talk about earlier too. And I've seen as I'm going down. This is the ancestral communion, this is what it says. Is that um The evolved ancestors, which is your internal and external DNA, or joint heirs with Christ, in other words, your higher mind, and all the mediators, which is your heart or essence between man, which is your lower self, and God, which is your higher self. So this symbolizes that the ancestors are your genes, your DNA. Now, it says righteousness. Someone who dies at an old age from natural cause is held in high regard or someone that dies apparently in war or just cause. Someone that is highly respected, that follows or defines a moral code or passes on an ethnic code to their family, elders, and ancestors before them. Someone that had children during their lifetime. An exception is occasionally made for those that are barren in life. This was based on if they did some exceptional for their community or family. Anyone that serves as a link between the living material world and the spiritual worlds, which is priests, occult, mystics, mediums, psychics, musicians, etc. It says, ancestors are known to do the following. Check this out. Act as mediums or mediators between man and God. Give protection. Acts on your behalf as fight your enemies. All right? So that you do not have to accept the act except in rare cases, because this is a time of war and there's a time for peace. Um, help determine if the people around you are friends or foe. Provides perfected insights on matters that has confused you. Keep your grounds and connect to family energy. So that is what the ancestors do. So when, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So when the ancestors appear, they are there to act as a medium or they are there mm-hmm. to give protection or they are there mm-hmm. to help determine if the people around you are friends or foe. Are they there to provide insight on matters that has confused you? All right. Uh, for Brother L, his great grandmother coming to him, that is what she keeps coming to him about in order to provide perfected insight on matters that mm-hmm. has confused him. Of course, mm-hmm. he told me that he had that. questions concerning her. Mm-hmm. He has questions concerning her. So here she is. All right. Well, here I am questioning me. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right, and also she's um, there to keep grounds and connected to the family energies. So that's how you keep the family um, line going is by giving respect to the family um, ancestors. Now, mm-hmm. these are individuals that are not considered ancestors but dead relatives. These are the so-called unrighteous types. All right, now, don't get upset at me, but this is basically what Africans say, people who commit suicide. Criminals, thieves, murderers, liars, etc. General non repentant sociopaths, psychopathic, poor characters, promiscuous, cowardly, deceitful, etc. Young people that die unexpectedly or in tragedy. People that die without children, except there's rare exceptions. And people that do not display wisdom or spiritual understanding, understanding, or understanding of life. So these are individuals in which that would be um, considered. Um, push back on the unworthy, you know what I'm saying? In other words, you won't want them on your altar because you want, just like, for example, you won't want a pedophile or um, child molester or, you know, someone who committed, you know what I'm saying, um, you know what I'm saying, suicide, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, things like that on your altar. You won't want to put them on your altar unless you was praying for them to ascend to the next level. Now, that's possible, too. Um, i give a good example. My cousin, Tim. All right, my mom told me that he got killed during a robbery. 
You know what I'm saying? If you're talking about Brooklyn Hood cats, right? That's mm-hmm. where I'm from. So here he is, you know what I'm saying? He's robbing a cat, cat shooter, kills him dead, right? Mm-hmm. I, put, I put Tim's picture on my also because I'm like, yo, this is my cousin. This is my first cousin. You know what I'm saying? You know, we grew up mm-hmm. together. You know, so mm-hmm. I start praying for him, right? Right. And an ancestor comes and snatches me up my body and takes me to go and see his graduation from becoming a dead relative to being a living ancestor. And mm-hmm. he, he he's coming down the aisle. It's like a soul train um, line, <laughs> okay, with ancestors mm-hmm. on both sides. they clapping and cheering for him. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and 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 they wear an African garb, and they've got on all these beautiful garments and things. And he's coming down the aisle like he got on the damn um, prison uniform on with stripes and shit. You know, mm-hmm. when he has a handful <laughs> of African, but he has a handful, of, but he has a handful of African garbs in his arms, and he's mm-hmm. walking down. And he's walking down the aisle, and they're just clapping. But he's looking around, looking bewildered. And I'm standing, and I'm, and being in wow. my body, ancestor who pulled me out told me that he can't hear you, because I'm talking. Because I'm like, oh, shit. you know, I'm like, oh snap, you know, what I'm saying? you know, tell him, yo, you know, he could not hear me. You know, what I'm saying because mm-hmm. I was only given permission to see because I'm the one in which that helped him get to that level. You know, say through my, you know, through my um, prayers and through me acknowledging him, transforming him from a dead relative to a living ancestor. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the ancestor was happy that he made it into the ancestral bone of the living ancestor. So they clapping and cheering and everything. He come down the line. I'm like, nigga, break dance. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking he should be break dancing or something, but he looking all bewildered. You know what I'm saying? Like, what happened? What is going on? I don't know what's happening. You know, and I was trying to, you know, yell to him what was going on and what was happening, but he couldn't hit me. So there are things like that in which I'm talking about that it always happens. You know what I'm saying? So this, mm-hmm. that's the whole thing. There are relative to those that are in the afterworld or on the astral plane, possibly the lower astral plane, but receive no honors like praise, poems, or sacrifices, etc. They are not consulted, nor are they afforded a direct link to the Godhead. Mm-hmm. So that their living relatives can gain divine insight. In other words, they can't do shit for you when they're mm-hmm. dead. dead um, they just they just like a zombie. But that's mm-hmm. the reason why you can act, pray for them even after they pass on to help them graduate to the next level of consciousness. So now, if he has to incarnate again, you know what I'm saying, which more than likely he will, um, he will be in a much greater, you know what I'm saying, um, enlightenment stage. Oh, okay. Well, what about this communication with the with the um? What is that? What is that? The idol, ionosphere. Is that what you said earlier? What? I- the I- ionosphere. I- ionosphere. Yeah, the ionosphere. ionosphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where Wait, the all the spirits of the ancestors go? So they can come down. <laughs> oh no, this might sound crazy. They can come down. They can communicate with you too, right? <laughs> Right, well, different the things, as far as far as far as as far as assisting you, right, in different in different matters and putting pieces together in the journey. Well, hold on, let me let me see because there's a book called the Unk Book. Okay. There's a book called the Unk. It's written by your Unk Amen. Okay. Exactly, and I'm glad you reminded me of that. Um, let me let me see if I can find the book. So I can read that passage right quick because that is very important for what he says. Okay. I'm not asking just to be asking when I ask these things because I've experienced certain things and it's good to have somebody and make it. It's like a confirmation or it's like right. explaining it further. Thank you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right, let me see here. Let me pull it up. I got information here. Let me see if I got it. Um. 
Okay. In the book by Lil Unk Amen. It's called the Unk. He states that the ionosphere is the heaven in which Christians, Muslims, and Jews refers to. And that is in the ionosphere in which that the ancestors go to after leaving their physical body. Now, what that means is this, is that you have a heart system in which that taps directly into and disrupts the communication between us here and the ancestors there. All right? Mm -hmm. And you get this information, you go to um, Angels Don't Play This Harp, there's a book called Angels Don't Play This Harp, and he speaks mm-hmm. about the fact that um, this machine purposely disrupts communications in the ionosphere. Hence, that means that it disrupts the communication between us and them. So that means that they are purposely, these beings, these calcified pineal gland beings, all right, mm-hmm. are purposely disrupting the connections between us and our ancestors. So this is the reason why a lot of people are having problems dreaming, lucid dreaming, and so forth and so on. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I want to get that information in there too for those that are listening. Okay? Mm-hmm. So that is what the book says, the Unk books talks about, is that the ionosphere is the heaven of the Christians, Muslims, and Jews, basically. Yes. All right? So that is where we go to after we leave the physical body. All right? Yeah. Because you have for mm-hmm. the electrons. Upon death of the physical body or the release of the spirit upon death, not only is the vapor, which is the molecules, the water vapor molecules is released upon the exhalation, but also upon the release is electrons. And these electrons, scientists have looked at under a microscope, and they said that when an electron makes a 360-degree rotation, it disappears from out of sight but obviously it's making another 360 degrees rotation somewhere else, and then it reappears back to make another 360 degrees under the telescope, under the uh, microscope. So that is telling you that it's 720 degrees, as Dr. York always spoke about, and that that's 360 degrees symbolic to a circle, which is spiritual, while the physical is 360 degrees of the square. So a square has 360, a circle Mm -hmm. has 360. Two different Mm -hmm. shapes but have the same degrees. The spirit, which is the circle, symbolizes us transforming and leaving the physical body, which is the square. Mm -hmm. And we are moving into that. So that's what the ionosphere symbolizes. Matter of fact, the book goes on to say that the ionosphere is a duplicate, is a mirror. And is a duplicate of everything in which that is here on earth is actually is there in the mirror field. No matter how faint an object is on earth, it is there. It is impression. It is a it is um imposed upon the ionosphere. So that means if this that means when you go to sleep at night, you know that when you close your eyes, you go to another world. You go to the dream world or the astral world, which is actually the ionosphere, which has trees, there's cars there, there's people there. There's buildings there, there's grass there, there's whatever else is there. Whatever you see here, it's there. Well, that's the ionosphere. Mm-hmm. That's what he just said in the book is that it's a mirror of everything on which that is on earth is there in the ionosphere. So check that out. So when the electrons go and leave the physical world, which is the square 360, and goes to the circle 360, it's going to the same, um, going to um a different world, but with the same impressions and same images. And that's mm-hmm. the first that That's what's called, that's what the Catholic Church actually would refer to as, um, um, remember, they speak about that there's heaven and hell, but there's also purgatory. Well, that would be symbolic mm-hmm. to purgatory. Yeah. Okay? And yeah, that's see, where I- you would be judged. That would be where you would find out if your heart which is your spirit or soul is lighter than a feather so that you can actually travel on beyond the ionosphere and go to another planet uh, with higher um, morality, ethnic, um, yeah. righteousness, or et cetera, in order to live, you know, um, a, a thousand years or 10,000 years or 50,000 mm. years or et cetera. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 harp uh, they project these uh, microwave energies that they have uh, at, uh, at, uh, into the ionosphere to just like Aline said uh, to disrupt the communication between our ancestors. Uh, I also believe that those that are Christians, uh, Muslims, and uh, Jewish alike, uh, that's their belief <coughs> that their ancestors is in the, resides in the uh, ionosphere. So therefore, uh, this, they strongly believe that, and that's why they're so easily, uh, communication is easily disrupted. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's working. I don't think it's working that good. Because <laughs> some, because uh, I think communications are still coming. I think communications are still coming through. So exactly. they're not really working. Like my great great grandmother. So I communicate yeah, with her. So right, communication but, definitely is coming through, but it still doesn't stop them from having these people attempts of being able to do these types of things or want to do these types of things. Yeah, exactly. What I'm saying, I don't, I don't believe my my great great grandmother's in as of the ionosphere. I believe right. he's at a different plane, but not in the mm-hmm. ionosphere like the Christians, Muslims, and uh, the uh, uh, Jewish Hebrews believe. You know, mm-hmm. well, it's all so, the same thing because the ionosphere is not just up; it's around. Remember, uh-huh. you live in the atmospheres. You breathe in the atmospheres. That's what I'm looking at. Yes. It, right. So, yeah. so it's not just up; it's around. It's around uh-huh. you. You know, right. so that's, that's, um, and, yeah. it's, and it's within you. And it's within yeah. you. You know, so that's really what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. I want to make that clear. I know it's the way I know it's the way that he explains it, but it's not the way that it is. It's it's, it's not just up; it's around. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, because your mind will take you up. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's around. Okay, it's in layers, right? You saying because <laughs> not to say that. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And remember, I said earlier that it's symbolic to the seven states of consciousness. You already have your seven bodies, but you just mm-hmm. think that that person just think that they just want a body because it's the physical body. Yeah. But yet, uh-huh. if you ask them um, how many systems is in this physical body, they will tell you nine. They tell you, well, I got my lymphatic system, my um, um, my uh, circulatory system, you know, my, you know. I mean, so so there's nine different systems in this one body, but yet you're not a multidimensional being. Okay, so we mm-hmm. did, we ascend, we ascend, and we did descend throughout the different um, consciousness levels, or we either we get stuck at one and have to elevate to the next. That's what you're saying. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. In other words, we can't. You got to yeah. stop getting stuck, and you got to start looking at everything as holistic. As one, as one. That's right. As one, as holistic. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, what about this? Okay. Um, as you were talking, <laughs> an event happened that I was just thinking about when you're talking about the ancestors being. When the transition, when people pass in the transition, is it possible for somebody to have a, a uh, is it possible for somebody to have a thought so strong that they want to communicate somebody, and sometimes we are mediators to deliver certain messages to certain people. Yes, no doubt about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. No Cause someone had passed. Okay, someone had passed. Um, it was a while back. It was a friend of my son, and mm-hmm. as it was going on, I think they were taking him. We heard that he, they were taking him to the hospital. And right. I know he. Probably, I don't know. I don't know whether they want to believe me or not. But um, at that particular time, it seemed like he he had a message to give to my son. He just wanted to let him know he 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 loved him and he appreciated him because I think his my son was trying to help him find a place or something. And right. and that um he wasn't in a lot of pain and he just wanted to know he it's like he accepted his death you know and uh, oh, 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 oh. that's called what no that was um first world order radio go ahead guys oh oh okay yeah and it was I mean it was strange it was strange to me but it's like I could sense certain things. And I thought it was kind of, you know, it's something you just say to everybody. But I did mention, right. I did mention to him, but it did, it did right. go hand in hand with the event that was happening at the time, though. Right. And it was like he had a message to give him just before he passed on to this higher spirit or something. 
So was it possible no, that this but, person just had a strong thought at that particular time? He was focusing on him, and probably he couldn't communicate with him, so he put it to somebody else. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, we seen that. Yeah, we seen that in the movie Ghosts. If you go back to see the movie Ghosts. Um, oh yeah. Um, the dude, you know, um, Patrick Swayze couldn't communicate with his girlfriend, so he had to use Whoopi Goldberg in order to do so. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh yeah, okay. I yeah. Uh-huh. That movie. Oh okay. And yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was a psychic. She was she was sensitive to spirits. Even though she mm-hmm. was using it as a hustle, she actually had mm-hmm. a gift. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, well, what what, yeah, what does that yep. mean? Well, what what does that mean when it comes to females? So then, if you know, a lot of discussion is about activating the pineal gland through the kundalini. Are females just it, it's, open it's to already? Uh, all of that is simply to expand it. To expand it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Expand the consciousness. Okay, expand mm-hmm. the consciousness. Okay. To expand consciousness and to expand your gifts. Mm-hmm. Right? In other words, the more you expand it, the more you're able to control it consciously. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Well, I don't want to. Oh, I, I, okay, I think I have to for tonight. It was interesting. Okay. Yeah, cleared up some things. It confirmed a lot of things for me, too. I really appreciate right. the time. Appreciate that. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you both have a good evening. You too, man. You too, man. Peace and love. Take it easy. Peace and love. All right, Brother L, um, you any closing remarks before we go here? Yes, uh, the, 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 the lecture tonight was splendid. Excellent. You know what? Loved it. Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate yeah, that. So we're going to do it again. Keep on doing it again. That's all I can say. Yes, no sir. doubt. And, of course, you have been listening to First World Order Radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetic of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetic of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it.